This is kind of a Prevo Bay. What I might do is take this off. What happens is, is the air comes in, filter, fuel filter, transmission. It also shows me the 12 volt and the 24 volt. Finally got this working. And then I just, I threw this in. Taste that, that was bright brass. I replaced this, this was bright brass. Two air conditioners off of my batteries. So I got the steering wheel kit from Prevo. Howdy guys, thought I'd do a video on everything I've done. So far, I have taken apart and fixed that door handle. Still think I might replace it. Um, I'm gonna go kind of around the outside and then the inside. On the front here, I've replaced this glass. So I got, these are, um, I guess you could say like glass um, pieces. And then I put LED bulbs in both of those. So now they're super, super bright. They did have the halogen in there and it just wasn't very bright at all. Um, so it, I don't think it was very much for, for that. You know, otherwise, you'd have to replace the front cap. I did go to Prevo in Tennessee, uh, sent them a note of what I wanted to do, and they said $100,000 to change that. So I said, uh, thanks. <laughs> um, I still think what I might want to, what I might do is take this off and um, maybe repaint the front, put some letters on there. Um, but the other thing I've done, I've replaced the uh, windshield wipers up here uh, on the very top. I can show you here real quick. It's not like I've done anything super cool, but I took the uh, satellite in motion thing off, took that antenna off, I'm trying to get that light off, but uh, I can't figure out how to get the harness unplugged without cutting the wires. I put a new antenna here um, up there on the top side there is a wire I think I broke. I'll try to get down here. Okay so the ultimate horn I traced the wires down and went into this box and one of these wires had pulled out and so and then rusted so all I did was simply redo it. The other thing, this whole entire bay, I don't know if there's enough light, was a disaster. And they have had like bituminous um, mat in here. So I scraped the whole thing out and re-put everything in it. I also re-plumbed the air compressor back in here. Because what had happened, it was leaking. Um, I also uh, got new fittings. Um, this valve here, I couldn't find one that wasn't plastic, but it's been holding. It's just for accessory air. Um, so I cleaned out this whole entire bay and I re-plumbed the um, accessory air compressor. Uh, the gauge was blown on it. The uh, This guy right there was, was popped. Um, coming to the the next bay here, I put new shocks on all of these. Um, they were starting to get worn out. They were only like $15 from Prevo, so that was pretty good. Um, there was nothing over on this side, so I kind of made it. I put in this uh, storage or sliding tray, and I left, you know, a couple feet over here so that I could have you know, some back of house stuff, ladder, and, and I'm not done with that. I, I need to finish it, but um, I've got it close. Uh, inside here is where I put the second air tank. So this line right here goes to my toilet and I need 60 pounds of pressure uh, and 40 pounds of water for the toilet to work. And Everything was leaking, so I took it all apart and I put in this new, this is a 24 volt air compressor that can run um, at 100 PSI continuous duty, so it's a heavy duty pump. Um, I also put in this air tank here and what happens is, is the air comes in and I can turn this valve and I can isolate 
the toilet and then also the um, bladder to the uh, uh, generator this way and then run it off of here so I don't have to run the whole uh, accessory air. I can just run this and this doesn't leak at all. And then also you can see I've put um, some different air water separators in for each one of those. So that's that bay. In this bay here, I've taken this apart several times. Uh, ended up putting new um, fuel valves in there. And then I also found out that the electric water heater, I think it was the high limit relay, it went out. So I replaced it as well. So fingers crossed, um, everything's good in this one. I also use this. Um, this stores my... Um, drain for here there was a big cabinet in here and i took it out and i put uh, different things in here i've got a hose air compressor hose that's the other thing too so i can have 125 pounds of uh, pressure right here and up front and then a couple different places in the back um, so i took out this cabinet that was in here and inside of here i've got a water filter so i've replaced the water filter of course and then just made sure everything inside of here works um, the other this has got a hydronic heating element for this bay since it's got the water and then it also has uh, an electric and i found the electric quit working so i replaced the thermostat in the electric heater so i'll show you that back in the once we get there so coming around this side i i haven't done anything this is a prevo bay the only thing it really does is control that cord um, coming back around here i haven't really done much myself but i had all the belts uh, redone um, engine oil changed a few, uh, engine oil filter, fuel filter, transmission, fluid filter, uh, all new antifreeze uh, and filters as well. And had everything reworked um, inside this bay. So just for reference, this is where I'm at in the back. Uh, I changed the air filter in here. It's pretty easy to do. It's like $90, it's huge. Um, and then this here is the uh, power steering um, filter. And in the fuel filter, I had them change it. One other thing that I did do back here was this valve assembly. It runs the um, backup camera pop out. It was leaking. And so what I did was I found on eBay uh, another one and so I took all the guts out of it and put it in this and it works perfect the other is back here I found um, this exciter wire on this alternator or it's a generator I'm not real sure I think it's an alternator um, it had broke off and so I put it on there and now it works works perfect um, the other is way back in here I found one of these valves leaking so i tore it apart and fixed it as well and then there's another air compressor uh, port there coming around to this side um, haven't done much in here but this is where the um, heater so this is the water bay in the back so if we look up top here there is a electric heater and I found it had shorted, it still worked, but it shorted neutral out. So that was throwing a GFCI breaker. And so I ended up tearing it out and putting a brand new one in there and they've changed the design of it. So I'm glad I did that. Coming around to here, this is where all my batteries are. So there's six uh, 245 amp, 12 volt, uh, large batteries, so it's a 24 volt system. The other, I'll try to throw this down in here. Back inside there is my generator battery and it had gone bad. Uh, and then I put a um, 
NOCO uh, Genius battery tender on it to keep it charged. Um, also inside of here, uh, what I've done is I've wired up um, 12 volt and a 24 volt area that I can land. Um, so I've got the Sentry system on there, and then also I've got uh, the Victron charger, which I'll show you, and then the air pump. Um, so this thing right here will do anything I want. We're trying to um, build one, but it'll show GPS posi position of the bus. Um, it shoots out a 3G signal. It also shows me the 12 volt and the 24 volt status and I've got it on an alarm if they go down too far. And then you can hook up anything you want and then you can also use this as a switch um, to turn things on and off. So coming out of the battery bay um, into this bay, if you've seen some of my other videos, this has been a mess uh, for the whole summer. I went to Myrtle Beach and plugged in, and I don't know if it was a coincidence or not, but I just had a whole bunch of stuff blow. So I, in this bay, I've, I've done, re, redid everything. So I've got a bypass system, so I can bypass everything. And when I'm plugged in, it'll come straight into the bus. So coming back to this bay again, so this bay and this bay is not done. Um, I ended up working all summer trying to get the electrical worked out all the time. We were going to take a two week trip to uh, Yellowstone. And so I finally got this working and then I just, I threw this in uh, so that we could take the trip. So this is not done, but it's a good start. So. Like I said, inside of here, um, when the electric power comes in, it this is a transfer switch and it goes to uh, this box and that goes to a dryer outlet, which we don't have. Um, but I'm able to, between this box and this box, bypass everything in here. And so it'll run 20 amp, 30 amp, 50 amp, 240 volt, whatever I've got, it'll run it into the two panels inside the coach. And then if I don't have it on bypass, what it does is it ends up running power to two of my Victron inverters. And so they're 24 volts, so they run off of that battery. And I've got 3000 watts going to one panel in the coach and 3000 watts going to the other. And that's in inverter mode. And when it's plugged in, the 240 volt um, two phase uh, split phase, it gets divvied up and I get 50 amps, 50 full amps of power to each panel. And so um, when I'm plugged in, I get 50 amps running through th these and then it also tops off the batteries. And then when I unplug it, also um, the generator comes through here too. And so the generator can feed through or I can um, bypass everything on the generator as well. Um, but then if I unplug it, then these immediately, um, they're a UPS like, so nothing inside knows it, but if I drop power, it will immediately feed, um, at least 3000 Watts per panel. So I can run an air conditioner. I've got four air conditioners. I can run two at a time off of this. And so I can run two air conditioners off of my batteries, um, and then while I'm driving down the road, that alternator will charge it back up. Like I can just continuously run it and then I can run the generator. Uh, the other that I've done here is I've run the cat six cables in. And so they, they land here and then they go down. I also put in that links. And so this distributes my power. So my batteries come in here and land and then they, um, feed off this way. But then I've also got the smart shunt hooked up to it. And then I also have the Serbo GX down here tied to it. So I can see everything and it works now. So it's, it's perfect. Um, these probably aren't the best because you can't really unplug it from 50 amp, 240 volt and then plug it into 20 amp, they don't like it. But what I found is I just turned these off, put it in bypass, and then I ran 
that Victron charger down there, it's got the same charge curve as these. And so all I do is I plug it in to the outlet that I put in down here. And so if I plug into a 20 amp, I turn everything off, bypass it. So I just flick a couple switches and then that charger tops off these batteries back here. And so it'll, I think it's 16 amp. So that's about as much as uh, the 20 amp circuit can handle. And so, you know, I, I figured that was just as good because um, I can run more off of my battery system and top off my batteries than I can plugged into a 20 amp circuit. You know, if I go to a campground, that's 20 amp. Um, then in here, what I did was I found I could stick my TV in. Like I said, this is just temporary so I could get down the road, but that pulls in and out. In here, there was an old CRT TV and it took up the whole bay and it was um, all the way back to here. So it, it took up this whole thing and it was an empty box. And so with redoing this bay, I could throw the TV in it and my speakers. This one was open. So I ended up getting this pulled out. And so this will pull, um, extend all the way out, except for the last couple of feet, which I wanted for kind of the back of the house stuff. And this here is just um, nothing. Um, so what I've done is I put a grill uh, smoker on this. And I think what I'm gonna do is finish it all out in some cherry or something similar. But like I said, I uh, just haven't got to it yet. But this, this right here will pull out as well. <clears throat> so it, it holds in there real nice. Um, this bay here, I didn't really do anything to except for put new um, gas struts on. One last item up here. So when we went out west, uh, the winds out there, we got into a windstorm and it was like 60 mile an hour uh, winds. And there's a little lock up top. I don't know if I'm pointing to it right or not. And it broke it. And so it ended up taking this awning and it blew it up like a balloon and then it came back in. And so I stopped and I ended up wiring that up. Um, and then we finished our trip out that way. But I replaced the lock and all of that stuff with uh, what was supposed to be there. Coming into the coach, like I said, this thing right here, it didn't work very well. And so I took all the slop out of it. I think I'm going to buy another one, but it just, it works, but it works really well now. Um, so I'm going to take my shoes off here. Coming inside, I uh, don't think I did much in here. Um, right in the in the beginning part but in here um, i added this screen and so this is a apple carplay um, took the old one out put this one in um, i ended up leaving this this is like a navigation system and i left it because i don't know what else to fill that hole with and then this is a cb as well um, the one thing I did do, and I, I'm glad I did it, was I upgraded the steering wheel. So I got the steering wheel kit from Prevo, and then I shipped it to um, this company in Texas. And they put on this fantastic, um, genuine leather, and hand-stitched and custom did everything. It's perfect, and it feels good, it looks good, looks brand new. Um, the other thing that I did, I got a video on that too that's posted. I added that Garmin, and so I'm glad I had it because when we went out west, the Apple CarPlay quit, and it was so nice to have the uh, Garmin. The other thing too is the Garmin, you can put in, you know, your length, width, height, weight, and stuff, and it'll keep you um, off the road you shouldn't go on. But then I went to uh, Mackinac, and that one went out. And this one started working, so recommend having two. Um, what else? Um, so inside of here, they had the smoked cover. Um, so I ended up building this. So this was an old CRT TV. And so the people we bought it from, they put this 
um, TV up here and then they just put a piece of uh, plexiglass up. And so I ended up taking some cherry wood, some speaker cover, and then I, I made it ma magnetic because it's kind of a neat hidden storage area. There's a lot in there. Um, the other is I put a sound bar in here. And so this is the tube, base tube, and this is the sound bar. And so it's really good sound now. And you know, you can play the radio, um, TV, anything, and it's all, you know, wireless. Um, up here, I don't like the way it turned out, but they had, um, this had the old, an area for the old uh, inverters. And the people that had me before it, they put in four outback inverters. So they had this crappy cutout and it wasn't done right. So I ended up redoing it. And then I found this TV amplifier buried in the back and it was always on and it was just very hot. So I pulled it out to the front and then I also put a data connection. So that goes back to my servo. So then I can see both of the uh, inverters from right here if I want to. This right here is to the wine guard up on top that I took off. But this was like bright red and I tried to tape it and paint it black. So it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. Um, inside this cabinet was a bunch of uh, old speakers for I think these and none of it worked. And so I ripped it out and there's all the speaker wire up top but I ended up labeling um, what cables go where. And then I took out probably 50 pounds of wire and just junk that didn't go to anything, didn't work. Same thing within here. And um, this right here is where that light is up top. And the light I think is probably about here. And so I just don't wanna tear all that up. Um, so that's, I think it up, up top here. So these are just magnetic and it just holds itself uh, together there. So I thought it looked pretty good. Um, so the other uh, inside of here, um, there's these outlets. So I redid the outlets and I put in new ones. And so that's got a USB-C and a regular USB on it. And that one I left alone. Um, coming through here, I did another video. But I ended up making these, these guys right here pull out. If I can get it here. There we go. These pull out. And so I've got a piece of wood that comes from here and then over and sits there. And I put the foam on it and it, we've got a, like a bed of pillows that come out. Um, it's in my uh, Pigeon Forge video. My daughter did it for you guys, but it makes like a twin bed here and a twin bed here. These do jackknife, but they only leave like three inches of room, so you can't come through it. And so by being able to do a twin bed here and a twin bed here, I still have like a foot of room or more, like maybe 16 inches to walk through while both beds are made. And so then that, that shuts like that. Coming back here, they had two leather chairs in here, which are fine, but um, they took up a lot of room and it was only room for two. So I ended up, uh, took some cherry wood and tried to match, you know, the rest of the wood in here as best I could, but I made these cherry stands and then I got these, um, this foam and then some fabric to go on top of it. That way four of us can sit down here. That will also slide out. Um, but we usually, we usually leave it in, but it makes it really useful. And then also I can take these and set them on top and we can do like an air bed down there. So I can have, um, one person comfortably here and you don't have to sleep with somebody and another one here. Um, and then, you know, one or two more people down here and then we've got the bed in the back. So coming back this way. I told you I put the inverters in. I put the Serbo GX so I can touch this screen. Um, I can hit pages and uh, so it shows me everything. So it's got leg one, leg two, pulling 30 watts, 224 watts, going into the inverter. The AC load, I've got seven and 49. So the rest of that's going into the battery. Um, and in the battery, I've got 158 watts being pulled out. It's probably my uh, lights and then some little 
um, things inside of here. But I mean, everything works. And on my, as long as I have a um, Wi Fi signal, I can see that anywhere. And then I've got a log of it. Um, I also put a, this in here. It's a carbon monoxide uh, detector because I've got the generator, um, everything else. Um, coming in here, uh, what I did, um, the people before had put this faucet on but they didn't change these. And so I found out why it was kind of a pain in the ass, but um, I ended up changing those out to stainless steel and redoing it. Um, that's an instant Insta hot and it doesn't work. Got it unplugged. So that might be my next thing is to tear that out. And that goes to here. What I was looking at doing was maybe getting like a, put a five gallon jug in there and then I can pull RO water from it. <clears throat> um, coming into this cabinet here, it was just dark. So I added this uh, light to it. Um, so in here is my thermostat and I can't, this is uh, part of the, the whole, a whole system. So I can't change this without changing the brains that it controls. And then if I do that, then those brains are too new for the air conditioners. So this has got to stay. Otherwise I'd probably put it somewhere else. Um, and then also these buttons are hard to come by. So that's why they're taped, but these are the, the, um, black tank dumps. So I don't really care. Um, so I, I just added this light inside of here, um, cleaned out the refrigerator. Um, on this door here, I changed out the hardware. It was bright brass. And so I put the um, nickel finish on it. Um, and here I changed this to nickel finish. And then this door, I've got uh, this guy right here that I can change out. But for some reason, I think like I had to remove the door to get it out. Um, so I've got it, but I couldn't change it out. And I think I'd have to remove more than is necessary to change that flush bolt out. Um, inside of here, I ended up adding uh, a light. This is where the washer and dryer would go, but I added a, a switch and a light, an LED one. So if I open this, it turns it on. Um, the other one in there was the halogen, so it got really hot. And then you had to flick the switch on, but I found these switches here and they work real well. So I shut those and, and everything's happy. Um, inside of here, um, what I've done is I added a toothbrush holder inside of here. Um, I ended up changing this out, which was a lot of, lot of work. Um, trying to get down inside of there. It's just really, really tight, but I'm glad I did it. The other was I changed this towel holder out. They were all... Uh, solid brass or bright brass. And so these just look a lot better. Change this one out. I changed this one out. Um, I changed that out. I left that. Um, that's the toilet. This is the toilet that requires 60 PSI of air and like 30 to 40 of water. Otherwise it just runs, it fills up and it'll overflow. Um, but that's kind of a system. So I've, I've left it. Um, then this shower, I ended up adding um, the shower curtain rod here, but this guy right here, you know, you'd think, well, just get another one. Well, it's not that high. Uh, most of them are taller. So this is like a custom piece. And so I think probably what you could do is tear the whole thing apart um, and then uh, sandblast it and then powder coat it, but it works. Everything else worked too, but so I, I left it, um, you know, pick your battles. Um, I replaced that. That was bright brass. I replaced this. This was bright brass. Um, all of this stuff. And it looks like the water is pretty hard, so I need to get in here and clean this. Um, replace that one down there as well. Um, replaced this guy. Uh, the water is just real hard in here, but um, faucet's just... Um, it's nice, just gives it a, a nice update. Um, didn't do anything to this. These are my electric panels. And so I have one of the inverters serving this, 
the other inverter serving this panel. So two air conditioners, two air conditioners, and then a mess of stuff on it. Um, so I kind of left those guys alone. Coming back in here, I don't think really done anything. Oh, there is a storage underneath of this bed. And so I tried to get, um, figure out a way to make it lift up easier. And I ended up taking one of the shocks from the bays, putting under here. So I can just come with my hand and then it just lifts up on its own. These guys right here were tired. Um, so I got a third one, if you can see it. And this is where we store the pillows and the air bed. Um, I was also gonna see if this safe opened. It does. Somebody asked about it and never opened it. There's nothing in there. So that's kind of it. Um, back here's the storage. There's like, we packed up four of us for two weeks and this place we still had plenty of uh, stuff left. But that's kind of it for back here, I think. Um, I don't think I did anything, but you know, kind of, kind of done a lot. I think next thing I'd like to do, there's another flush bolt. I had to remove the door. I, excuse me, I think to get that out. I'd like to do that shower, but it's not my hill to die on. Um, be nice if it matched, but I'd like to order a new one and just put it in there, but I can't find one. So if anybody can find one, let me know. Otherwise it's fine. Just got to clean it up a little bit, but that's kind of everything I've done in here. Um, you know, you can keep going to your heart's content, but um, everything works now, works real good. So that's everything I've done. Thanks for watching and uh, try to get some more videos out here for you. If you guys want to video of anything in particular, just put it in the comments and let me know. Thanks.